to a man you may know from a little show called The Office. Ah! Ah! Fumble! Yeah! All right, hey. Rain Wilson is done with Dwight, at least for the time being, but he has a new book out. It's a memoir entitled The Bassoon King, My Life in Art, Faith, and Idiocy, and he joined me to talk about it. So Bassoon King, where's the bassoon? I mean, really, the bassoon king. I saw right the bassoon king. That's, That's it, the, right there. Where's the bassoon? That's me. Where's my bassoon? It's, uh, I actually have it in the trunk of my car right I, now. I, if I were you to break it out? Well, actually, no, because I saw you on Colbert, and I hope you don't think this disrespectful. You were no virtuoso. Is that a fair? I can barely squawk out Mary Had a Little Lamb. <laughs> Hard, but I loved it when you broke it on the floor. That was terrific. <laughs> so when I picked up this book, and I read about a third of this thing, maybe, I don't know, some percentages is what you'd expect. I don't mean what you expect like it's not new, but it's funny, because you're obviously we know you as funny. The rest of it is not at all. It is deadly serious. What were you trying to do with this thing? Yeah, I, I wanted to, I told him when I pitched the book, I was like, look, this thing is going to be 85% funny. It's going to have all the funny anecdotes that you want. It's going to be stuff about the office for office fans. But there's another thread that runs through my life that is uh, kind of, I call my artistic and my spiritual journey. And I've had a lot of ups and downs. I had a lot of cr issues with my crazy family and in my life. And, um, you know, when I look back, it ties it all together when I look at my spiritual journey. You know, you and I have something in common. You probably wouldn't know this. When I was a kid, you know what I was called? Right. Big fat head, as were you when I was a little baby. For hey, the big same fat reason. heads! Look exactly, at that. we can get, connect. You know, one of the, every time I'm lucky enough to meet somebody like you who has created a persona in the media that people just are riveted by. I say, yeah, it opens doors once you finish doing that. Once mm -hmm. you were finished being Dwight, even though I'm not sure you're finished being Dwight, but it also closes some doors. Mm -hmm. So how do you? How do you navigate that thing? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's a, tif it's a difficult uh, thing to navigate, which is uh, I will always be known as Dwight. And I'm really grateful for Dwight. I'm grateful for the best job I'll ever have, for this amazing show, getting p to be part of a legacy of a great American television show. Um, but at the same time, I want to, I'm an actor. I was an actor for, I was a professional actor for 14 years before I did any Dwight. I did a lot of theater, a lot of different film, indie films. I've played a lot of different roles, bad guys, good guys, naive guys, crazy guys. And I have a pretty big range as an actor, and I would really like to exercise that range. You had Dwight write the forward, and he hates the book. I mean, did that yeah. offend you at all, or were you okay with that? I, how dare he? he, he really, I paid him 300 bucks, he really Dwight Schrute, to, to, to write the forward, and he can't stand the book. You know, before I knew, we said you were on the radio with us yesterday, and we, both Marjorie and Egan and I said this, we both knew a lot about Soul Pen cake and really been drawn to this thing. We had no mm -hmm. idea you were Soul Pink. I know it's you and your colleagues. Tell people what this other venture of yours is all about. Yeah, you know, when I started getting well known for The Office, I saw an amazing opportunity to do something really positive on the web. So it started as a website that was um, a social network for people interested in chewing on life's big questions, questions of philosophy and spirituality and creativity. And that was great, but we pivoted to become a, a media company because we found that we could best express our voice of what we wanted through doing video. So we do digital stuff, online stuff. We have a very um, exciting YouTube channel with 1.6 million followers. And our mission is inspiring, uplifting content. Well, and it is. The kid president, everybody's seen like 16 trillion times. Uh -huh. And the kid, where's the kid from? He is unbelievable. We had a meeting and my co-founder, Devin, was like, you know, we need more joy on our YouTube channel. And someone was like, have you seen this kid He's in Tennessee, little African-American boy in a suit and tie in a cardboard Oval Office pretending to be the president and doing these great presidential speeches that are hysterical and moving at the same time and just super funny? And uh, right now, of all the videos, uh, over 100 million video views. Like I always say, treat everybody like it's their birthday. Be like, hey man, here's a present. Here's a snack. You know, that one I get, and I can totally understand, but there's another one. Actually, let's play a little piece of this, and then we'll talk about it in a second. Okay. My name is Zach Zodiac. I'm 17 years old, and I have osteosarcoma. I've been told I have a few months to live, but I still have a lot of work to do. I want everyone to know. You don't have to find out you're dying to start living. I want to be remembered as a kid who went down fighting and didn't really lose. Now 
that's a 17 year old guy. His name is Zach. What's his last name? Zach Sobiek. He was dying when yeah. you did this thing. Mm -hmm. He decides that his music he's going to turn to in his remaining months. He writes this song. Mm -hmm. Who did you think the audience for? I mean, it's huge and it is incredible. I hate the word impactful. I can't think of another one. Hugely yeah. impactful. Mm -hmm. Who do you think was going to be drawn to this? I, I knew that everyone was going to be drawn to this. I, I came into Soul Pancake early on when we were doing these kind of videos and I said, we need to do something on death. It's the most true and yeah. profound yeah. shared human experience. We don't talk about it culturally, and we need to dig into this. And a, a great young filmmaker and actor named Justin Baldoni had this specific idea about look, focusing on people at the very end of life and what we can learn about how to live, how to really cherish our life from these people. And uh, he wrote a, a, a hit single song before he died. Clouds, and all the this proceeds, thing we're talking about, right? Clouds, yeah. yeah. And it, 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 all the money from Clouds went to fight uh, osteosarcoma that he had. It's and, a bone cancer thing. Yeah, yeah. and um, it, 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 it ended up being very effective in, in helping find a cure. Uh, at the University of Minnesota. Well, I'm looking for this page I want. Is it The Office the funniest show ever on television, in your opinion? I mean, can you be objective enough to, it is. It's in the top five, yes? I put it definitely top 10. What else Maybe would you put in the top five? five? Funniest shows? Yeah, ever. On television. Uh, ever, ever on television? Ever, ever, Oh, Seinfeld, I mean, come on. Um, I really like Silicon Valley right now. That's one that makes me laugh. But uh, Mary Tyler Moore, Taxi, it's hard to say ever. Okay, it's fine. So I, I get to the back of the book, 10 things I know for sure. And I was sure that was going to be like fall down funny kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Here's the first one. The deepest happiness comes from service to others. Mm -hmm. So I read the first couple lines. I figure there's a punchline coming. There's no punchline. The punchline mm -hmm. is the deepest happiness comes from service to others. Is that from, you're a Baha'i, is that from your faith? Is that where this springs from? That's definitely a teaching of my Baha'i faith, but it's also, you know, a teaching by contemporary psychiatrists and psychologists and, and brain scientists that uh, society tells us that we'll be happiest if we just take care of ourselves and mm -hmm. our needs. I want to be happy, so I need this stuff and I want to line this stuff up and I want these things to go my way and I want to have this kind of comfort and this kind of status and then I'll be happy, but it doesn't work that way. Really, the deepest happiness is in doing stuff for other people. Do you walk the walk or you just talk the talk? I talk the talk. <laughs> yeah, it's all BS, yeah. <laughs> Give me one example before you go of how you marginally are walking the walk on this thing. I know you're probably too modest, but give me one. Well, we founded Soul Pancake as a way of be, being of service. My wife and I do uh, a project in Haiti with adolescent girls. We're serving about 500 girls yeah, and that. doing literacy and, and scholarships uh, for them. But, you know, it's a struggle. You know, it's a struggle against the, the ego and the wants that we have in ourself to try and make ourselves a better person and also try and make the world a better place. But that's... I think everybody's mission. Can we end with a little advice from me to you? Tell me. Lose the bassoon. Rain Wilson, <laughs> it's good to see you. Done. Thanks Lost. so much. Okay.